really excited about what God is going to minister to us tonight. And how many of you believe that God answered your prayer tonight as you pray? Amen. I count it the privilege and the honor to, to be able to stand before you. I'm not going to make you stand long. Um, we're going to go right to St. John chapter 11. This word is going to be so good. It's going to be so life-changing for you. And I do not say that boastfully, but I just say it because it's the word of God. God's word is awesome. So it's going to revolutionize somebody just like it did me. So I promise you this Wednesday you did not come by accident. And you are going to be blessed by what God is going to say. So if you look in your lesson, you notice that our study was in St. John chapter 11. And we're going to read together verse 17 to verse 27. And then I'm going to give you three key principles that the Lord gave me that is going to revolutionize our life. And we will be able to leave here rejoicing in the Lord. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. So in verse 17 of John chapter 11, let us all read together. This is the, I'm reading from the King James Version. So let's all read starting at verse 17. Let's read. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lying in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fourteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Amen. You may have a seat. Okay, now, I want you to prepare yourself just like if you went to a real good restaurant. <laughs> and you know the food is good, and you know that you're about to eat real good. I want you to sit up and get, get, your, you get your pen. Your pen is like your fork. Papers, your napkin, get everything in position because this is something you may not get again because <laughs> it's fresh from God. So you better take this and take this home with you, all right? Amen. So I I have a little assignment from the Lord, uh, when, um, and we definitely want to give honor to God to um, Bishop Sanders and Pastor Sanders in their absence, and, and they are doing some amazing ministry work down in Columbia. So we want to pray for their. Uh, their travel and safety, but they would definitely be back home for Sunday, so you would definitely be able to see them. But I just, I, my assignment today is to give you three points out of this lesson. Um, I've read, I've read this story like hundreds and thousands of times, but what we're going to talk about today for the next few moments, I know without a shadow of a doubt, um, everyone in this room is going to be affected by it. My prayer today was, Lord, let whoever need this be here. I, I, cause I, I believe, you know, it's nothing like um, when you're cooking and you're, you're in the kitchen sweating, cooking, and then you put a nice hot plate in front of somebody, and they look at it like, I don't want that. It discourages you as a chef because you did all this cooking. So I hate to have wrote all these notes. <laughs> so God was giving me all these ingredients, and I would hate to give it to a person who don't appreciate it. So I'm glad, glad that you're here. You are the ones that's supposed to hear this tonight. Amen. So let me give you a five-minute background. And I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a walker, so I like to get out and sort of walk a little bit. Um, so I'm not the traditional, like to stay behind the pulpit type person. Um, I'm going to leave my Bible here, and I'm just going to share as God gave it to me. In this story, John chapter 11, um, I want to give you a little bit of the history before we get to verse 17. Many of you have noticed and learned, heard about the story of Lazarus. Um, being sick, and it opens up talking about where Jesus was, and about hey, he gets a report that Lazarus was sick, and Mary and Martha was basically searching him because they wanted Jesus to come while he was in the sickness. They want they understood that if we can get in contact with Jesus before the 
in this stage while he's sick, we understand that everything is going to be all right. So let's pursue Jesus and let's go get Jesus wherever he's at to come heal our brother. Then we realize that throughout from between verse 1 to verse 17, you're going to see a little bit of story. I'll let you read that on your own. But what takes place here, y'all mind me coming down here so I can get comfortable. I want to feel y'all a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, what takes place from verse 1 to verse 17 is real interesting. And it's something that you really, I want you to go home and read this on this wonderful, beautiful, sunny evening. <laughs> go to the park if you need to, but just read the rest of this because you're going to see something that's real powerful here. They come up to Jesus and says, Jesus, um, Lazarus, whom you love, is sick. We need you to come and heal him. Jesus does something that's real crazy. I, mean, I don't know why he did this. Mother Keith. He purposely, purposely delayed. <laughs> Have anybody ever prayed something to hear? You want God to do it at a certain time? You get us. All of a sudden, <laughs> he did this on purpose. This wasn't because Lazarus was in disobedience. This was God basically saying, you know, I'm going to do this on purpose. This was a purpose delay. All right. That's, that's a little nugget right there. All right. Let me get to the, the thing. So he goes on and he says something to his disciples that I kept circling this thing in my Bible. He says, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. When I said, when I saw that, my sister Myers, I, I said to myself, so Lazarus sickness had a purpose. I had to stop there and I said, okay, Lazarus' sickness is not unto death. But then we read, Lazarus died. Now I'm really confused because he says in the beginning, this sickness is not unto death. So how did, why did a man die? Now I'm really like up there like, okay, Lord, you're going to have to talk to me now because you sound like you're contradicting yourself. It's just like you saying, God were saying you healed and all of a sudden you get worse. After he tells you you healed, you're like, wait a minute, Lord, that ain't what you said. Or a perfect example, he'll call you, he'll look at you, Jeremiah said, you are the, a prophet to the nation. And Jeremiah's like, uh-uh, not me. He'll speak to you at a stage that's contradicting what he's saying. So, I, okay, that's a little another, another too. <laughs> now he, this sickness, this sickness, the three stages, let me give you this to help you have your pen. Get ready to write this down. Three key points. There's three stages that everybody in this room is going to face through life. All right, three stages. Stage number one is sickness stage. <laughs> oh my God, this is, this is, I feel God power already on this. <laughs> sickness stage number one. Can I get you on the second stage? The second stage is death. Stage three is resurrection. Every single one of us in this room is in one of these three stages right now. Some of us is in the sickness stage. Some of us is in the death stage. And some of us is in the resurrection stage. Now, let me break down these three stages so you can understand um, Jesus' per perception when he was looking at the situation. Stage number one, sickness stage. Sickness stage represents a frustrated stage. Let me explain that. When you are sick, you are not dead, but you're frustrated because you can't function to your optimum potential. I hope you get this. So you have a lot of people living, but they're not doing everything they can do because they are in sick stage. How many of you have had a sickness recently? Maybe a headache, a flu or something? You were still alive. You probably was flicking the channel, watching TV. But you couldn't do certain things that you used to do when you were feeling better. So sickness stage is a sign of you're not reaching your optimum. All right. That could be some of us in this room. Now, stage number two is death stage. This stage is called, the, the interpretation for the death stage is you have to be dependent on somebody else. This is going to be a deep stage, so I need you to listen to this stage. You have to be dependent in the death stage. If you think about death, when, you know, we just had some funerals here um, recently, and the person who was dead in the grave did not get in that grave by themselves. They needed hands of another. Oh, oh God, I don't miss this. 
The death stage gets you totally out of control of yourself. So now you're going to understand why Paul says, I die daily. You know why he says that? Because he understands as long as he's alive, he is not functioning like he's supposed to be functioning. So the only way he's going to produce is if he dies. So now you're going to see the scripture that we all may love, John chapter 12. It's a scripture, a powerful scripture in there that says, I set a corn of a wheat, falls into the ground and die. It abided alone. Stage number one, because we're going to get the resurrection stage. Some of y'all make it happen. Shout. <laughs> but in stage number one, the thing about the sickness stage is there's a level of being alone in that stage. When you are really sick physically, sometimes the person who's sitting there telling you, do you need some more soup? Do you want me to get you some orange juice? You want to look at them and say, if you only knew how I felt, give me whatever. I don't care. Because the person who's trying to help you can't relate to your pain, even though they're trying to help. So in sickness stage, you do feel a little bit lonely. Death stage, you are actually dying to your will. In resurrection stage, let me give you the last one. The resurrection stage always produces a harvest. Oh, God, Lord, help me. Let me show y'all this. This is about the, somebody, somebody like, Lord, what stage I'm in? <laughs> now, watch this. In the sixth stage, now, I'm, now I'm, let me break down from the scripture. Jesus, when he saw Lazarus, he says, this sickness is now to death. So in a nutshell, Lazarus was chosen to display these three principles. Lazarus started off sick in the first part of chapter 11. Then Lazarus dies, and then Lazarus gets resurrected. Understand, when he was sick, Lazarus was in the control of his sisters. Lazarus couldn't do much. That's why his sisters had to go get Jesus. Stage two, when he died, he was in control of others because others was the one that wrapped up his body. You understand me? Stage three, resurrection, he was in control of Jesus. Because when he resurrected, guess what? It was harvest time. And let me, let me explain harvest season. When you have a harvest season, your harvest is always to bless other people. So what Jesus said was, I'm going to use Lazarus to show you how I, as a farmer, think like a farmer, because every time Jesus talks about the kingdom of God, he always relates to farming. The kingdom of God is like a man who plants a seed. The kingdom of God is like this, the kingdom like that. It's always something that has harvest oriented. So all Jesus is showing you now is the three stages of, of how humans are going to go through life. So, he takes us through six stages. Now, I'm about to show you a principle that's going to help you. Because I love analogies. Y'all know I love analogies. Okay, now, how many of y'all like popcorn? Hey, man, good. I ain't the only one. <laughs> all right. Now, this bag right here. You know, I did this all just for y'all because I love y'all so much. <laughs> yeah, all right. This is for me tonight. I'm just joking. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I went and bought me a bag of popcorn seeds. How many of you right now would eat the, eat the popcorn like this? Who in here is crazy enough to do it? I want you to come up here and show us all how to do it. <laughs> Your teeth will fall out trying to do that. <laughs> so, this bag right now is in sickness stage. It's frustrated. You know why? Because this is as much, it's limited. It can't do nothing else but this. This is all this bag is, this is all it can do, Mother Thompson, because it's, it's in the sixth state. It's frustrated. Then, when it gets to dying stage, it's in the heat, in the microwave, because it's being put there by the hands of another. Oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> now, can we get happy on the resurrection stage? Resurrection stage. Hallelujah. <laughs> Now, see, y'all ain't. <laughs> Something about resurrection stage, I just want to stay here for a minute. The resurrection stage always blesses somebody else. You notice that the popcorn ain't blessing itself. It's blessing me. I ain't the one that died. The popcorn did, but guess who benefited? So, as I'm sitting up here going like this, mm, mm -mm -mm. 
All right, God. Anybody want some? <laughs> As I'm enjoying this popcorn, the reason why this popcorn is valuable, I hope y'all getting it, it got a price on it. I paid money for this. Because it went to resurrection stage, which is the stage of harvest. Now, can I tie all this to you? My goodness, I hope you're ready for this. How do you know if you're in sickness stage? God, I'm frustrated. I know there's more in me, but I can't grow. You in stage one. Lord, there's more. I got vision of me, but why ain't nothing moving? You're sick. Look at your neighbor and say, you're sick. <laughs> you know, say that in love, you know. <laughs> I know that was all right, but <laughs> you're sick in love, you know. So most people, you have a lot of Christians sick today, living, they're existing, but ain't got nothing, this is the most you're going to get out of them. And in you is that. So what God does, he says, I, you know what, I got to help y'all out because God said, if I, if I leave it to you, you're going to stay in that popcorn bag that, as seeds and be happy. And when I made you, I didn't make you to stay in the bag. This bag was not made to stay on the shelf like this, y'all. It wasn't. So the person who made pop, the, the inventor knew that it had something inside it under the right heat. Under the right heat, it becomes this. So most people says, I want to stay here, Lord. I don't want to go through nothing. God says, but I want, to, I want you to look like this. I need you to bless some people. Some people want some white cheddar popcorn. <laughs> and you're like, well, I don't care. It's too hot. <laughs> Let them eat me as seeds if they want me that bad. And God said, I can't do that because I love them too much to break their teeth. So I want them to enjoy what I give you. So you're going through hell, not for you. Oh, Lord, see, y'all been shouting that. Because <laughs> most of you are taking it personal while you're going through the fire. There's, you have a, now, I looked at one of these kernels, and this kernel don't look nothing like what I'm eating out that bag. So Jesus, all Jesus did to Lazarus, he says, Lazarus, I can see Jesus overlooking all his, all these people. And Jesus said, for this situation, I'm going to use Lazarus. So when they came and told him that Lazarus was sick, Jesus was not shocked. Jesus said, oh, that's good. They were like, what? So Jesus said, now I want you to picture Jesus as a person putting this bag in the microwave. You know when you're about to cook popcorn, right? You put, your, you put the popcorn in the microwave, and you set it on two minutes, and then you may go and run and do something else, and then you come back and get it when it's finished. That's what Jesus did in this story. <laughs> so when they heard, when he says Lazarus was sick, Jesus said, oh, okay. Let me put them in a the microwave. Come on, guys. Let's take a two-day journey. And they were like, what are you doing? Jesus said, this is supposed to happen. I need him to marinate in the heat a little bit. Because there's this resurrected, this sickness is not unto. It's for the glory of God. Meaning, it's going to glorify all the people. So Jesus said, I got this thing set up so perfect. So what I'm going to do, I want us, we have to wait two days. Let's just go two days. And it's funny because Bethany was right near Jerusalem. It's literally like from here to Chippewa. That's how close Bethany is to Jerusalem. And Jesus purposely goes back opposite from where Lazarus was on purpose because his popcorn was cooking. And Jesus wasn't crazy to, like some of us, sit there. Where did I put my bag? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Jesus ain't crazy like some of us who sit there and put the bag in front of the microwave and be looking right in it. Two minutes? I set up for two minutes? Well, guess what? I can go, you know, wipe the cabinet down. Let me go watch the news real quick. And they come back down. That ain't going nowhere. And look at all the other people around them going crazy. Mary and Martha was crying. Oh, okay, if you would have just been here a couple of days ago, four days his body has been dead. And that was, God was like, you know, let me show you a scripture because it's going to really make sense. We're still in John chapter 11. Look what he says right here in verse 
Um, let's, 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 let, me just, let me just show you verse number 6. Let's go to verse number 6 of chapter 11. It says, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he stayed two days in the same place. <laughs> Jesus said, okay, my popcorn's in the oven. Good. That's good. Okay, it's supposed to do it. All right, so he said, then after that, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou there again. Jesus said, are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because he had no light. Then said he, after that, he said unto them, our friend Lazarus is sleeping. Look at his speech. He's talking about him sleep. And then he says, but I may go and awake him. So Jesus says, when he says sleep here, he's telling his disciples, my friend Lazarus just entered stage two. He died. And now it's time for me to go downstairs to my microwave to get my harvest. Obviously, y'all missing it. <laughs> so Jesus said, okay, guys, let's go back to Judea now where he's dead. And let's go get our harvest because right now, I timed this thing so perfect that I wanted him to die right in that same city because in that city, I needed a bunch of people to be present. I need this particular tax collector. I need this particular publican. I need this particular scribe to come to this area and moan over Martha's brother. And Jesus says, now it's time for me to produce harvest because I got people who can watch it. So you are being set up. <laughs> You're sitting there, God, hurry, hurry. God is like, wait, all the people ain't in place yet. There's a couple of people I want to see the show. <laughs> so I'm going to keep you frustrated a little bit because I, I need your cousin to come in town that weekend. And you like, you know, you don't know about what's going on. So all of a sudden your cousin calls you and says, I just go come down to Buffalo and just hang out with you in August. And God knew that August was the weekend that your harvest is coming. So your cousin can become a believer. That's what harvest is, y'all. Now, let me take you through the three stages again. Now, I want you to actually identify where am I? Because you are one of these three. I can almost guarantee you, you are either, either six stage, death stage, or resurrection stage. Six stage, we know is what? Frustrated stage. Is there anybody here frustrated? Yeah. Mm, it's, and trust, listen, this is a church. We should be the most truthful folks. How many of y'all frustrated? Raise your hand. <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> we got people. I ain't frustrated. I'm saved. That's just, you saved and frustrated. <laughs> we should be the most freest people in here. It should be okay for us to come in here and say, man, this was not, you know, I had a very frustrating day today. It don't mean I'm staying frustrated. I just, I just entered stage one momentarily. <laughs> Money didn't come my way the way I expected. Somebody just did something that upset at me, whatever. But God is good. I'm going to refocus. It's okay to do it because God understands that. So he's like, okay, stage one. So we have some stage one people in here. How many of you in here is in death stage? Death stage is where you are totally dependent in the hands of another. Mm. Now, let me make this more spiritual for some Because... That may not sound right to some people. The hands of another, I don't need nobody. How many of you dependent in the hands of God? Okay, no, we have a lot of dead people. <laughs> but guess what? God uses people. So you are still in the hands of another. Oh, Lord. Help me. So that job you're working at, that, person, that next blessing you got is attached to a person. Mm, God is going to use another person to help you get what you need. So you ain't going to get it without engaging people. You might as well forget it. So, death stage is I need help. Everybody say I need help. Because I can't move by myself. So when you dead, you have basically said I cannot do anything of my own. Now, how many of you are in resurrection stage? Resurrection stage is your life is blessing other people so good to the point where you're not benefiting from it. Oh, Lord, help me. Let me show you this. Remember I showed y'all? This popcorn is not eating itself. Everybody else. Now, let me show you how you know you're a resurrection stage. You start to feel used. Everybody pulling on me. Everybody want my counsel. Everybody calling me to pray for them. You in harvest stage. Oh, 
See, this, uh, this is this, y'all can handle this, bro. Because some of y'all are like, God, why are so many people calling me? Man, I'm human too. I got my own problem. Why well, everybody who asking me for advice? You're at harvest stage. <laughs> You're at harvest stage. So most people right now are trying to figure out, Lord, what are you doing in my life? Now I'm gonna show you. Let me. I'm gonna show you a couple of other principles, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, move, move from there. Now we know the story about the fish and the loaves, right? Let me show you how powerful these stages is. Jesus takes, Jesus is, you know, is, you have this multitude of people who basically is hungry. And they don't have any food. And all they have is two fish and five loaves in the hands of a little lad. Why this food, why this two fish and five loaves was in the hand of the lad, it was in sixth stage. Because that's its, that was its optimum potential. It was going to stay two fish and five loaves. You understand what I'm saying? So, when they gave it into the hands of Jesus, the fish and loaves became dead. Then, when he blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples, it became resurrected. Because it multiplied and blessed others. Oh, this is some good stuff. <laughs> So, God is saying, you are just like the fish and loaves. He's going to take you. You cannot multiply by yourself. So, you have to go from sick to death to resurrection. So, Jesus says, you know what? I'm going to show you how to do this with my own life. <laughs> Jesus says, I'm going to come down in human flesh. And I'm going to walk among you in this sick body that y'all live in. <laughs> So Jesus starts walking in sixth stage because now he's limited. You know why? Because he's in the body. So when Jesus wanted to go to a certain city, he had to walk to get there because he was in his flesh. Then he actually gives his life and die on the cross. <laughs> Soon as he goes past death to stage two, which is death, he rises up three days later. And look at the harvest. <laughs> now he steps back, gives us his spirit. And he says, I need you to live just like me. So you're going to go through six stage. Meaning you're going to be walking with all this stuff in you, but you're limited. Then he says, die. Then after you die, resurrection always comes after death. Very simplistic way for you to understand that now every time you go through something, you should actually get happy. You got to get happy because you were picked. Lazarus was just chosen. And I want you to see Jesus like, I want, it was funny, I, I get these crazy images, y'all. God just made me crazy. <laughs> I can see Jesus going to this big, you know, I can see Jesus in the kitchen cooking. And I can see Jesus, you know how you go into a big cabinet and you try to look for certain seasoning. You're like, oh, I'm going to use some salt. I'm going to use some seasoned salt. I'm going to use some black pepper. I can see Jesus looking at all of us like that. He's like, for this situation, I need this sister right here. She has the right season that's going to make this thing taste good. So others may not understand why I picked her now, but she's the one. I put something in her, and I need that to come out in this season. So I'm going to bless her by letting her go through hell. She's squealing like a pig. Oh, <laughs> get me out of this mess. But she's blessed because she was chosen. Yeah. So, let's look at one more person that we all love by the name of Job. Mm -hmm. Job was in sixth stage in chapter one of Job. Yeah, yeah. He had his stuff. He was real comfortable. God said, you know what? I got Job, I got to prosper you just a little bit more than what you got. Just a little bit more, Job. I know you content. I know you happy with your kids, with all the money. But let me just give you a little bit more. So in order for me to do that, Job, I'm going to let the enemy make you die. So all of a sudden, his kids get messed up. His kids get killed. All his stuff gets taken away from him. So guess where Job is at now? Dependent stage, which is death. Now he's all he can do is worship. 
All he can do is get on his, his knees and put his head between his legs and say, blessed be the day of the Lord, because he has no, he has total dependency. Till you go to the end of the book, you see resurrection stage. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Let's, let's talk about one more item that we all love. We, you know, it's an item called money. You know, we, God gives us a principle. He says, you know, you give me, you know, 10% of what you make. And I'm going to show you the three stages and everything in your life. So stage number one, this dollar is in sixth stage in my pocket. <laughs> it's reached its optimum potential, staying in this pocket. Death stage is when I put it in the hands of God's work. And resurrection stage is God multiplies what I give. So, now, now, now I say this because let's talk about family for a second. If you look at your family, right now your family is in sickness, death, or resurrection stage. When you are a resurrection stage, your family, you can be married, you can just be a, a single mom or just whoever. You can be blessing other people's lives without you knowing it. That's when you're in resurrection stage. You just walk in and people are watching you. Man, I want my marriage to be like that. Man, I want to I wanna be happy like that. This person just got the peace of God. Your life, you could be a resurrection stage and not even know it. Then if you're in sixth stage, you are frustrated. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Everything frustrates you about it. These kids just give me a headache. Everything is frustrating you in sickness stage. Death stage is when you just put it in the hand of God and say, Lord, listen done. I can't do nothing else with this thing. Can I give y'all one testimony real quick? And I've, I've shared this before, but I, I always go, often go back to my mother because she, this, this fits perfect. She went, my mother went through three stages and I saw, and she went through these same three stages with me. Stage one was, she was trying to force me to go to church. You know, I was like 17 years old. She was trying to force me to go to church. Boy, go to church. So she was frustrated because she was trying to do it and it wasn't working. Then I remember one day it got so bad <laughs> that she just came to me one day, sister saying, she just came to me and just said, you know what? I put you in God's hands. This, that's exactly what she said. <laughs> she said, I'm going to heaven. I don't care where you're going. I love you, but I am not about to try to save you because I can't. Only Jesus can. You are in God's hands and she left me alone. So guess what stage that was? Y'all good, y'all got it. Resurrection stage, look at me now. <laughs> if, if she would have kept it in her hands, I still I probably would have been bucking against her, trying not to come to church because she would have still in sickness stage. And many of you right now is so got this thing, your situation in your hand like this, that's why your head is hurting all, all the time. That's why you're constantly saying, God, I'm tired of this. I was like, okay, you're in sixth stage. So my job tonight was real simple. It was just to give you these three stages so you can figure out, Lord, I got a shift. I've been here too long. And the funny thing about harvest, the thing I love about harvest is that after harvest is over, now another situation comes where you go back to sickness again. <laughs> and you'll keep going through that cycle until you die. <laughs> one situation may be family, next one may be money. Then the next situation that you have to be sick and die and resurrect is going to be a whole other area. So if you get these three principles, guess what? Apply it to everything that happens in your life. So when the enemy hits you, just be like, oh, this is awesome. God chose me. <laughs> you know how that can confuse the devil so bad when you're starting to get happy to be chosen. Now you can understand why the scripture says rejoice. Don't think it's strange when fiery trials come. You have been chosen. <laughs> You're, you are happy because you're chosen. Not because the situation feels good. Your mentality about going through has changed. You are seeing that, wait a minute, how am I going to become popcorn? I have to get here. So what God does to you, God will give you a vision of you looking like this. And he'll show you this and you reach for it. Lord, I want that. But you're here and God is showing you this. And you're like, Lord, why are you teasing me? Give me that now, Lord. <laughs> and God is like, okay, you want to become this? 
you're like, yes, Lord, I'm willing. You know, we all start singing, Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. That's my favorite song. And then as soon as he said that, he's like, thank you. And then he puts it in the microwave, and we so crazy, we jump out of the microwave. It's hot. Woo, God. And then God's like, well, why you come back out of the microwave, bag? Because you turn the heat up too hot. Well, I want you want it to be this, right? Yeah, God, but can't you blow on me or something? <laughs> just put me in a fridge and just say something, and I can become this. God's like, but I, I get this is my three-step plan. Sick, dead, resurrection. And he says, so I want you to become this so bad. I love you so much. And there's so many people who is waiting on the white cheddar. So your, your decision is time sensitive. This bag actually says sell by July 31st. This is about to get deep. He puts an expiration date on the harvest. And if you keep squiggling, Hopping out the microwave, and July come, and you still looking like this? Don't, don't, do not say the devil busy. <laughs> Just say I procrastinated, and I didn't, I didn't. So God was not the one that shortened your harvest. He was trying to help you by letting the test come. You the one that said, uh uh, thank God, because it's too hot. And God said, that was my way of baking you to get you to become popcorn. Because the way, now, oh God, the way popcorn was made, it was made to transform under heat. The way your vision is made, it only transforms under pressure. That's why he says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. <laughs> Those who live godly shall, not might, not, you know, once a year. It's going to come if you are going to live God. If you're going to look like Christ, guess what? It's going to be heat next to it somewhere. He did it for Daniel. <laughs> Daniel was doing everything right. But he was in sixth stage. So Jesus purposely let Daniel get lied on, get thrown in the lion's den. <laughs> so when he was in the lion's den, Daniel was in there sleeping with Leo, the lion, just in there, just taking a nap with the lions. Daniel was so dead to himself, Daniel said, I'm going to sleep. Okay, one of y'all lions lay here, I need a pillow. And in Daniel's dying, so many people got resurrected. The king all of a sudden said, ooh, I know that. And guess what Daniel did? All Daniel had to do was say, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm tired of trying to live this thing by myself. I got to a point. I got to a point in my life. I'm going to be true, true. And I'm, I'm speaking this from my heart. I have tried to do a lot of things my own. I have tried to, you know how you get a situation come in your life, you try to take it and work it yourself, Lord, uh, I ain't going to let this happen to me, I'm going to fight this thing. And the more you fight, the more headaches you get. And I kid you not, if God is my witness, I got to a point where I said, you know what God, I'm so tired of fighting. I'm so tired of it because it's distracting what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm so busy fighting that I can't even see that I'm supposed to be popcorn. I forgot that I'm popcorn. <laughs> So busy fighting. So one day I just said, I, I'm done. And I, immediately after I begin to start letting situations go, I begin to see harvests so fast. Because the dying part, understand this, the death season is not a long season. <laughs> Jesus died at this hour. Three days later, his death season was over. Lazarus died this day, and then a couple of days later, his resurrection was there. You, your season of death is only this big. And God said, just go through it real quick. Just get through it real quick and die to me so I can get you to harvest season. So right now, many of you right now, the prayer you've been praying, the prayer we've all been praying, is sitting there right there with an expiration date saying, and some of us, we do got July 31st on our harvest. <laughs> And it's, the more we squiggle like a pig, we're going to be looking like this seed.
bag of seeds. Coming to church, praise the Lord. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. And you're going home broke, just angry at everybody, kicking the cat, everything. Just you just bad at everything. And then we come to church and we clap, shout. So I changed my model. Many of you may see me and I may seem like I'm real calm. And, I, and I've learned to start living a calm life. I used to be very like, I've learned to, that's why a lot of times I, 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 I just do what I do because God, I'm starting to understand the stages. So instead of me getting frustrated and, and getting mad at everything, I'm just like, okay, this is supposed to happen. Jesus made up his mind. Jesus like, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus entered these stages because Jesus basically was like, you know, Lord, is there any way? This cup can pass. What stage was he in, y'all? When he said that, what stage was he in? Uh-oh, got you thinking. Think about it. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says, Lord, is there any way that this cup can pass? What stage was that? Stage one. When he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. What stage was that? Now, stage three was when he told the boys, go on and sleep. And he was looking for the soldiers to come get him. He was like, come on, y'all. Take me out. Just take me. I, I'm willingly <laughs> about to die. I'm willing because this is my time to resurrect others. There are so many people waiting on your ministry. Things like, um, you know, owning my own music school and things like that. I, he showed me that stuff. He showed me things like recording albums and things like that. He showed me that. But he didn't show me that I had to go to the microwave to get it. I didn't see that part. No, I'm true. <laughs> I did not see that part. <laughs> so when I began to go in the oven, I had to make a choice in the oven. I had to say to myself, you know what? My life is simple being in this brown bag. Nobody can, you know, I don't have to, nobody ain't going to really want me. You know, I can be alone. Hmm. You know, I don't have to worry about people using me. You know, I could just stay in my own little space and, and just live. <laughs> or, I want to be a blessing. And I guarantee you, you will never become a blessing until you go into the oven. It's impossible. It, it's just. So, look at your neighbor and say, what stage you in? I pray. I truly, truly, truly pray that when Jesus told Lazarus, when Jesus said to them, when Jesus said to them, he says, he says, basically, Lazarus is dead, but I'm going to go wake him. Jesus waits till he gets completely drowned and, I mean, body just totally just, I mean, just decayed. And then Jesus says, this is how I like my popcorn. I need my popcorn to really to stay in the I don't want my I don't want to set my popcorn. You know how you you get safe, you know, uh, sister, sister Kathy probably could could tell you this or and Minister Archie. But one time I because I do like popcorn, one time I went at work and I put some popcorn in, in the um in the microwave and I ran upstairs to my office. I set it on two minutes and thirty seconds. I'm thinking that's safe, you know? But um all of a sudden there was an aroma. <laughs> That sort of rose from those tears to my office. <laughs> and I'm like, something burning. I come down there, listen. <laughs> that, ba- that popcorn bag was, you know it's burnt when the bag is black. <laughs> that bag was as black as, as my sister's shirt. I, and, and I left it in there too long because I, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, I, you know, you know, I want every, you know, I'm, 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 I'm the kind of person, if I put it in the microwave, I want every kernel. <laughs> I want every kernel to get the heat. <laughs> I don't want to be big, eat my popcorn and see a bag of seeds at the bottom. I want everyone to get it. And in me doing that, I burn all the rest of them, being greedy. <laughs> God deliver me, y'all. Amen. Then, I, after that experience, you know what I started doing? I started setting it to 175. Well, a minute and uh, like 50 seconds. And I would set it, and then I would come and check on it. <laughs> and shake it, and if I hear a lot of seeds, I'll put it in now for 30 seconds. <laughs> Leave, come back, check it, shake it again. If I keep hearing seeds, I'll put it back. Now I'm doing it in small stages. 
And that's what God is doing for some of you. Sometimes, you know, God just wants to make sure all the kernels is. So he puts you in the microwave. A lot of you pop, and you're like, okay, you're starting to see things blooming in your life, but then there's still some seeds. So he says, okay, no, nah, there's still some more. Let me put you back in there again. And he starts popping you again to get the rest, because guess what? God do not want you to leave this earth with anything in you that was supposed to come out. <laughs> he put too much in you. He didn't do all that dying on the cross for you to be... Think about it. When he died on the cross for you, he was dying for your investment. He want to harvest. So he's like, I didn't do all this dying just for y'all to be coming to church and clapping and singing. I want you to actually go out and begin to multiply and duplicate and become like me. So in a nutshell, most people right now, he's, like I said, I don't know if you're in the microwave, if you feel like you are in the microwave or not, but I can already tell you that you are in a, in a great, you are in one, in all these seasons are blessed. The sixth stage is not a bad stage. It's a bad stage when you stay there too long. Because it's always a start. It's always a stage one to everything. So the sickness stage is not always bad. It's just if you stay there too long, that's when the frustration overrides you. That's when you knew, that's when milk gets sour. When it stayed, when something has stayed stuck too long, it gets sour. You gotta transition. So God is always transitioning us, okay? So I'm gonna say that I'm gonna wrap this up right here. He says in verse 17, then when Jesus came, he found that he had lied in the grave four days already. Now, Bethany was nigh into Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary. Notice when it says many, that was Jesus' intent. <laughs> he wanted a lot of people to be there. Many came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Jesus was talking to her about his harvest. All Jesus was telling her was, I, trust me, I got him in the microwave. He's popping right now, and I'm about to go down and get my bag. That's what he was saying. <laughs> and she was like, now look what she said. He, she says, um, in verse 24, Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. So basically right there, what she began to say was, I'm going to stop telling you how to bake your popcorn. I believe whatever you're doing, you're supposed to do it. And I believe that you can actually raise him up. So basically, all she, when she said that, he says, thank you. Let me go to my kitchen and get my popcorn now. So when he says Lazarus come for, all he was doing was opening the microwave door and just getting his bag out. And when all the people saw that Lazarus came out of that, they was like, oh, my God. Jesus says something in one of these scriptures. He says, for your sake, it was good for me that I wasn't there. Because if I was there, I would have got you out too early. And you would have been dwarfed. <laughs> so I needed to stay away from all the noise and just get away from all the y'all people who want your popcorn at one minute. And I need to just get away so I can let this thing bake for two and a half minutes. I'm sorry, two minutes, not two and a half. That's, that's burnt. <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> And so Jesus had to get away because he knew some people was going to get greedy and want to take him out too soon. And because if Jesus would have been around Lazarus and all that was going on, Jesus could, would have got distracted because he loved Mary and loved Martha. He didn't want to get his emotions away. So Jesus said, let me leave and get away from all this because I do not want to be one of these people looking in front of this microwave when I'm talking about, okay, we're... So Jesus already knew harvest is coming. I just need to get some things set in place. So guys, let's take a walk. Let's chill out for a minute. So you've been praying, Lord, I need you to fix this thing for me. God is just saying, I just need to, I'm just going to take a, just walk away from the situation for a minute. I know you wanted me to move on it last year, but the people wasn't in place for me to give you the harvest yet. So just wait a little bit while longer. I'm about to release this thing to your life. I'm about to bless you beyond what you even prayed and asked me for. I'm about to give you above and beyond. So it's when Ephesians 3 and 20 says he does exceedingly and abundantly above all you ask or think, he's talking about harvest season then. So he's like, I'm about to prepare you for your harvest season. You are really about to hit a harvest season. 
I don't even think some of y'all ever received that. You are about to hit a harvest season. I'm going to say it one more time for somebody who's still doubting. <laughs> you are, now understand, when this harvest season comes, it's going to blow your mind. He is preparing you, so whatever you are going through right now, just know, God, I thank you for choosing me to be an example of your harvest. You are just chosen. Look at your neighbor and say, you're just chosen. Don't get upset about your test no more. I know you don't understand why it's going this way it is, but it's the person who put you in the oven. He has everything under control. I hope you receive that word on tonight. Let's give God a hand praise. Come on, let's stand on our feet and give God a hand praise. Amen, amen, amen.